Well, much like the death of Queen Elizabeth II, the King's coronation has yet again reignited the debate as to whether or not Australia should become a republic. So for more on this, we're joined now by head of the Australian Republic movement, Craig Foster. Good morning to you, Craig. Good morning, guys. Great to see you. So I guess you were up all night watching the coronation. <laughs> Cucumber sandwiches at the ready. <laughs> uh, no, my, our, I can assure you my oven at home wasn't troubled by a coronation <laughs> quiche. But uh, no, I didn't see it. But I've seen it all this morning. And mm. look, there's no question. It's an incredible spectacle, that's for sure. It's amazing. I saw Katy Perry walking around trying to work out where she was going and I thought that's probably what I would have been doing. Hey Foz, as part of the ceremony um, we saw the PM pledge allegiance yeah. to, to, to the King and yeah. uh, you've urged him uh, not to take part yeah. in. Were you disappointed? Uh, not that I'm disappointed. I think it's important for Australians to see that. Um, because you know this week we were asked to pledge allegiance as Australians yes. to our King and um, it's important for Australians to see that, uh, to see what I hope and what you know the majority of Australia hopes, um, because the support for Australians' full constitutional independence has has risen markedly in recent months, uh, particularly since the sad passing of Queen Elizabeth. And what we hope is that you know this is the final Prime Minister to have to pledge allegiance to a king. You know the everyone can have all of their different views about what is an extraordinary spectacle, an amazing mm. tourist attraction for the UK and, and to see all of the you know, famous people there and the history and the like. But more Australians are questioning you know, whether it's really representative of us anymore. It's clearly not. And really wanting to you know, break away and, 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 and tread our own path, you know, whether that's with all of our uh, British traditions that you know, we're respectful of. But to say that our head of state should actually represent us and they should be pledging loyalty to us. You know, to ask us to pledge loyalty to our actual head of state is a pretty incredible concept in 2023. So that's the pledge I missed last night. I was hoping that Charles would stand up and say, OK, I pledge my loyalty and allegiance and all of my heirs and successors to all of the people of Australia. You know, that's what we expect from our head of state and hopefully we can have that in the next few years going forward. He did say that he wanted to serve rather than be served, yeah. but, but that's not enough? Well, that's not the pledge. That's not what the pledge says. But, um, you know, this is part of the history of, you know, the monarchy and, uh, and of UK, of which they're clearly very proud. And, mm. um, you know, and it's remarkable for them to be able to put this in front of the world. But there are a lot of aspects of this ceremony as well which are problematic uh, for many people across the Commonwealth, and we have to remember that. Um, mm. You know, it's not all benign. You know, there's, there's a lot of people across the Commonwealth and First Nations and Indigenous peoples and and uh, descendants of slaves and the like, for whom this is actually, you know, really painful. Um, and it also represents a lot of suffering. I mean, the, the diamond in that sceptre, for example, yeah. The Cullinan diamond was, you know, it's called the blood diamond from South Africa. So there are elements of this which have, you know, greater import than just the wonderful pageantry, you know, which is, is quite extraordinary. So you know, Australia is a democracy and so ultimately the democracy has to rest in the people of Australia. So is now the time to advance the conversation? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. what, are you, what are the plans yeah, of you and, and, and fellow Republicans now? Yeah. Great question, Clint. So the, the answer actually really is not, re not really. Or, or no, and, and that's because whilst we've seen incredible support in recent weeks, and particularly when um, Charles asked us all to take a knee and asked our Prime Minister to take a knee, essentially, and pledge allegiance to him, um, support for the Republic just went through the roof and our memberships and so on, and rightly so. But uh, this year's about the voice to Parliament and the referendum, and therefore, you know, First Nations really need our attention. The fact that the coronation happened this year is historically significant because they both come in the same year. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're, they're very much interlinked for us to be saying, look, what are we about today? You know, as, as lovely as this might be, and, and as I said, you know, f for others it's, it's, it represents a suffering, but, um, you know, it's no longer a representative of Australia. You know, we've got over 300 cultural backgrounds in Australia here and we're very proud of our multicultural demography and let's not forget that many of those cultures, many of those communities in Australia also you know, have a complex history of legacy That's with right. the Crown, mm -hmm. not just our First Nations, and we don't often hear from them. But for all of us, let's bring that to life now. You know, we are our own country. Our sovereignty should rest here in us. Our head of state in future should be Australian, should we, someone should, that we're deeply proud of, who represents our values of equality, not inequality, of non-discrimination, not discrimination, uh, and of, you know, a togetherness between every single Australian. And just quickly, is there a year you would like this to happen? How, how soon are we talking? 
In the next couple of years, um, you know, uh, Anthony Albanese has talked about a possible referendum in, in his second term of government. Uh, for now, everyone can go to republic.org.au and I urge you to do that because, you know, a new Australia is about a compact between all of us, recognising the truth of our history and bringing our uh, proud British traditions forward with us but in their full complexity and truth. Uh, and, and, you know, we're preparing for next year when we want to have this conversation with Australia and hear everyone's ideas, their concerns. Let's talk about what an Australian head of state looks like and, you know, let's start moving forward. Hey, Foz, thanks for being with us. No worries, my pleasure. Thanks, Craig. Welcome back to Weekend Today. It was a ceremony fit for a king and a queen. A royal procession with a golden horse-drawn coach. A coronation service at Westminster Abbey and a balcony appearance culminating in the crowning of King Charles III and Queen Camilla. And as the pomp and pageantry unfolded, it was the little minutes, little moments that had us captivated. So to discuss all of this, let's bring in today's talkers, Nationals leader David Littleproud and media commentator Sarah McGilvray. Good morning to you both. David, we officially have a new King and Queen of Australia. What was your favourite part of the coronation? Oh, yeah, look, I think it's got to be that crowning moment. Uh, we, we don't get to see that. In fact, it's taken us 70-odd uh, years to see uh, the next one from 1954 when it was last done. So I think uh, being able to see that uh, was, I think, the highlight. But the poms do pomp and, and ceremony so well. It was well-crafted, it was reflective, not only of the Commonwealth, but I think of the modern UK, where the diversity of nationalities that now live in the UK and right across the Commonwealth shone through. And I think that was uh, a great move by the new king to be reflective of a modern society that shifted so fast since 1954. It did feel a, li a little bit like we were stepping back in time, though, didn't it? Sarah, we also saw uh, <laughs> Prince George and Princess Charlotte yes. uh, in a way stealing the show. What about Prince Louis? It's so sweet. I mean, they're so beautiful, but I really am dying to know what they're threatened with before all these <laughs> events, because I have a four- and a five-year-old at home, and God love them, you could threaten them with anything, and they are not going to sit still and quiet. And even though Prince Louis took a little bit of a break in the middle there. Mm. Their behaviour is exceptional. I don't know whether they get a real right bollocking from their grandpa before this event, but they were gorgeous. They were gorgeous. Uh, so many beautiful moments throughout that ceremony, but the royal event has also reignited the debate about whether Australia should become a republic. We've just had the chair of the Australian <laughs> Republican movement, Craig Foster, on the show. He says that he wanted the King to pledge his allegiance to Australians. David, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, oh, look, I, I get there's different views in this country on, on the Republic, but there's more important issues for this country at the moment, like cost of living. And I get the government has, in fact, already put in place a Minister for the Republic uh, to, to actually advance that. But I think Australians uh, need to understand it's more than about pomp and ceremony. Uh, the, the King pledged his, his uh, allegiance to serve the Commonwealth, which is us as well. But here in Australia, you've got to understand, effectively, it's an Australian who runs this. It's the Governor-General, and it's about our democratic institutions and protecting Australians. So the Governor-General here in Australia isn't... Uh, isn't uh, elected from a political party, it's actually kept away from politics so that he can make sure that the executive government and the parliament respects the constitution. And in fact, it's a safeguard that's been used as far back as 1975, where an Australian had to intervene, who was the governor general, to make sure uh, that our constitution was protected. But he didn't, he didn't at that point, um, make the final determination. It was also always the Australian people. And I think that's an important principle we've got to remember. While there's a lot of history and pomp and ceremony in this, mm. our system of government is what we want uh, preserved and protected because it protects us, the Australian people, from people like me who are politicians. <laughs> well, Sarah, look, it, it was quite a spectacle to mm. watch, but watching that was also uh, really a reminder that it is a long way from, from the day to day life of every single Australian. Absolutely. And I don't know, I was feeling a little bit of um, church fatigue by the end of it. We've had a lot of, you know, Diamond Jubilees, Golden Jubilees, you know, uh, the funeral, uh, and now this. I never, I think watching it, you felt a real disconnect almost to the world that they live in, and that's mm. fair enough, none of us are royals. But even as an Australian, thinking this, this isn't representative of us, this isn't about us, um, and, and it's not, so how much longer do we indulge and, and keep them as our head of state, you know? It's certainly going to be a conversation uh, in the next few years. Sarah and David, thank you so much for your time this morning. Hey there, Today fans, Sarah and... <laughs> 
What's my name again? Oh Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports, and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?